This article is intended for those already familiar with quantum mechanics and its attendant interpretational difficulties. Readers who are new to the subject may first want to read the introduction to quantum mechanics. Relational quantum mechanics RQM is an interpretation of quantum mechanics which treats the state of a quantum system as being observer dependent, that is, the state is the relation between the observer and the system. This interpretation was first delineated by Carlo Rivelli in a 1994 preprint, and has since been expanded upon by a number of theorists. It is inspired by the key idea behind special relativity, that the details of an observation depend on the reference frame of the observer, and uses some ideas from Wheeler on quantum information. The physical content of the theory has not to do with objects themselves, but the relations between them. As Rivelli puts it, Quantum mechanics is a theory about the physical description of physical systems relative to other systems, and this is a complete description of the world. The essential idea behind RQM is that different observers may give different accounts of the same series of events, for example, to one observer at a given point in time, a system may be in a single, collapsed, eigenstate, while to another observer at the same time, it may appear to be in a superposition of two or more states. Consequently, if quantum mechanics is to be a complete theory, RQM argues that the notion of state describes not the observed system itself, but the relationship, or correlation, between the system and its observers. The state vector of conventional quantum mechanics becomes a description of the correlation of some degrees of freedom in the observer, with respect to the observed system. However, it is held by RQM that this applies to all physical objects, whether or not they are conscious or macroscopic all systems are quantum systems. Any measurement event is seen simply as an ordinary physical interaction, an establishment of the sort of correlation discussed above. The proponents of the relational interpretation argue that the approach clears up a number of traditional interpretational difficulties with quantum mechanics, while being simultaneously conceptually elegant and ontologically parsimonious. History and development Relational quantum mechanics arose from a historical comparison of the quandaries posed by the interpretation of quantum mechanics with the situation after the Lorentz transformations were formulated but before special relativity. Rivelli felt that just as there was an incorrect assumption underlying the pre-relativistic interpretation of Lorentz's equations, which was corrected by Einstein's deriving them from Lorentz covariance and the constancy of the speed of light in all reference frames, so a similarly incorrect assumption underlies many attempts to make sense of the quantum formalism, which was responsible for many of the interpretational difficulties posed by the theory. This incorrect assumption, he said, was that of an observer-independent state of a system, and he laid out the foundations of this interpretation to try to overcome the difficulty. The idea has been expanded upon by Lee Smolin and Lewis Crane, who have both applied the concept to quantum cosmology, and the interpretation has been applied to the EPR paradox, revealing not only a peaceful coexistence between quantum mechanics and special relativity, but a formal indication of a completely local character to reality. David Merman has contributed to the relational approach in his Ithaca interpretation. He uses the slogan, correlations without correlata, meaning that correlations have physical reality, that which they correlate does not. So, correlations are the only fundamental and objective properties of the world. The moniker, zero worlds, has been popularized by Ron Garrett to contrast with the many worlds interpretation. The problem of the observer and the observed This problem was initially discussed in detail in Everett's thesis, The Theory of the Universal Wavefunction. Consider observer O measuring the state of the quantum system S we assume that O has complete information on the system, and that O display style O can write down the wave function psi display style psi wrangle describing it. At the same time, there is another observer O display style O who is interested in the state of the entire O display style O 
S display style S system and O display style O likewise has complete information to analyze this system formally we consider a system S display style S which may take one of two states which we shall designate display style up arrow wrangle and display style down arrow wrangle ket vectors in the hilbert space h s display style h underscore s now the observer o display style o wishes to make a measurement on the system at time t 1 display style t underscore 1 this observer may characterize the system as follows psi equals alpha plus beta display style psi wrangle equals alpha up arrow wrangle plus beta down arrow wrangle where alpha 2 display style alpha caret 2 and beta 2 display style beta caret 2 are probabilities of finding the system in the respective states and obviously add up to 1 for our purposes here, we can assume that in a single experiment, the outcome is the eigenstate display style up arrow wrangle. But this can be substituted throughout mutatis mutandis by display style down arrow wrangle. So we may represent the sequence of events in this experiment with observer O display style O doing the observing as follows: t1 t2 alpha plus beta. Display style begin matrix T underscore one and right arrow and T underscore two alpha up arrow wrangle plus beta down arrow wrangle and right arrow and up arrow wrangle end matrix this is observer O display style O S description of the measurement event. Now any measurement is also a physical interaction between two or more systems. Accordingly, we can consider the tensor product Hilbert space H S H O display style H underscore S O times H underscore O, where H O display style H underscore O is the Hilbert space inhabited by state vectors describing O display style O. If the initial state of O display style O is in it display style text in it wrangle some degrees of freedom in O display style o become correlated with the state of s display style s after the measurement and this correlation can take one of two values o display style o underscore up arrow wrangle or o display style o underscore down arrow wrangle where the direction of the arrows in the subscripts corresponds to the outcome of the measurement that o display style o has made on s display style s if we now consider the description of the measurement event by the other observer o display style o who describes the combined s plus o display style s plus o system but does not interact with it the following gives the description of the measurement event according to O display style O from the linearity inherent in the quantum formalism T one T two alpha plus beta I N I T alpha O plus beta O display style begin matrix T underscore one and right arrow and T underscore two left alpha up arrow wrangle plus beta down arrow wrangle right O times in it wrangle and right arrow and alpha up arrow wrangle O times O underscore up arrow wrangle plus beta down arrow wrangle O times O underscore down arrow wrangle end matrix thus on the assumption C hypothesis two below that quantum mechanics is complete the two observers O display style O and O display style O give different but equally correct accounts of the events t1 t2 display style t underscore 1 right arrow t underscore 2 topic central principles
Topic: <laughs> Observer dependence of state. According to O, display style O, at t two, display style t underscore two, the system S, display style S, is in a determinate state, namely spin up, and if quantum mechanics is complete, then so is his description. But for O, display style O, S display style s is not uniquely determinate but is rather entangled with the state of o display style o note that his description of the situation at t 2 display style t underscore 2 is not factorizable no matter what basis chosen but if quantum mechanics is complete then the description that o display style o gives is also complete. Thus the standard mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics allows different observers to give different accounts of the same sequence of events. There are many ways to overcome this perceived difficulty. It could be described as an epistemic limitation. Observers with a full knowledge of the system, we might say, could give a complete and equivalent description of the state of affairs, but that obtaining this knowledge is impossible in practice. But whom? What makes? O display style o s description better than that of o display style o or vice versa alternatively we could claim that quantum mechanics is not a complete theory and that by adding more structure we could arrive at a universal description the troubled hidden variables approach yet another option is to give a preferred status to a particular observer or type of observer and assign the epithet of correctness to their description alone this has the disadvantage of being ad hoc, since there are no clearly defined or physically intuitive criteria by which this super-observer, who can observe all possible sets of observations by all observers over the entire universe, ought to be chosen. RQM, however, takes the point illustrated by this problem at face value. Instead of trying to modify quantum mechanics to make it fit with prior assumptions that we might have about the world, Rivelli says that we should modify our view of the world to conform to what amounts to our best physical theory of motion. Just as forsaking the notion of absolute simultaneity helped clear up the problems associated with the interpretation of the Lorentz transformations, so many of the conundra associated with quantum mechanics dissolve, provided that the state of a system is assumed to be observer-dependent, like simultaneity in special relativity. This insight follows logically from the two main hypotheses which inform this interpretation. Hypothesis 1, the equivalence of systems. There is no a priori distinction that should be drawn between quantum and macroscopic systems. All systems are, fundamentally, quantum systems. Hypothesis 2, the completeness of quantum mechanics. There are no hidden variables or other factors which may be appropriately added to quantum mechanics, in light of current experimental evidence, thus, if a state is to be observer-dependent, then a description of a system would follow the form, system S is in state X with reference to observer O, or similar constructions, much like in relativity theory. In RQM it is meaningless to refer to the absolute, observer-independent state of any system. Topic. Information and correlation It is generally well established that any quantum mechanical measurement can be reduced to a set of yes, no questions or bits that are either 1 or 0. RQM makes use of this fact to formulate the state of a quantum system relative to a given observer, in terms of the physical notion of information developed by Claude Shannon. Any yes, no question can be described as a single bit of information. This should not be confused with the idea of a qubit from quantum information theory, because a qubit can be in a superposition of values, whilst the questions of RQM are ordinary binary variables. Any quantum measurement is fundamentally a physical interaction between the system being measured and some form of measuring apparatus. By extension, any physical interaction may be seen to be a form of quantum measurement, as all systems are seen as quantum systems in RQM. A physical interaction is seen as establishing a correlation between the system and the observer, and this correlation is what is described and predicted by the quantum formalism. 
but, Ravelli points out, this form of correlation is precisely the same as the definition of information in Shannon's theory. Specifically, an observer O observing a system S will, after measurement, have some degrees of freedom correlated with those of S. The amount of this correlation is given by log 2k bits, where k is the number of possible values which this correlation may take. The number of options there are. Topic: <laughs> All systems are quantum systems. All physical interactions are, at bottom, quantum interactions, and must ultimately be governed by the same rules. Thus, an interaction between two particles does not, in RQM, differ fundamentally from an interaction between a particle and some apparatus. There is no true wave collapse, in the sense in which it occurs in the Copenhagen interpretation. Because state is expressed in RQM as the correlation between two systems, there can be no meaning to self-measurement. If observer O display style O measures system S display style S S display style S S state is represented as a correlation between O display style O and S display style S O display style O itself cannot say anything with respect to its own state because its own state is defined only relative to another observer o display style o if the s plus o display style s plus o compound system does not interact with any other systems then it will possess a clearly defined state relative to o display style o However, because O display style O S measurement of S display style S breaks its unitary evolution with respect to O display style O O display style O will not be able to give a full description of the S plus O display style S plus O system since it can only speak of the correlation between s display style s and itself not its own behavior a complete description of the s plus o plus o display style s plus o plus o system can only be given by a further external observer and so forth taking the model system discussed above if O display style O has full information on the S plus O display style S plus O system. It will know the Hamiltonians of both S display style S and O display style O, including the interaction Hamiltonian. Thus, the system will evolve entirely unitarily without any form of collapse relative to O display style O if O display style O measures S display style S. The only reason that O display style O will perceive a collapse is because O display style o has incomplete information on the system specifically o display style o does not know its own hamiltonian and the interaction hamiltonian for the measurement topic <laughs> consequences and implications topic <laughs> Coherence In our system above O display style O may be interested in ascertaining whether or not the state of O display style O accurately reflects the state of S display style S we can draw up for O display style O an operator 
m display style m which is specified as m o equals o display style m left up arrow wrangle o times o underscore up arrow wrangle right equals up arrow wrangle o times o underscore up arrow wrangle m o equals zero display style m left up arrow wrangle o times o underscore down arrow wrangle right equals zero m o equals zero display style m left down arrow wrangle o times o underscore up arrow wrangle right equals zero m o equals o Display style m left down arrow wrangle o times o underscore down arrow wrangle right equals down arrow wrangle o times o underscore down arrow wrangle with an eigenvalue of one meaning that o display style o indeed accurately reflects the state of s display style s so there is a zero probability of o display style o reflecting the state of s display style s as being display style up arrow wrangle if it is in fact display style down arrow wrangle and so forth the implication of this is that at time t 2 display style t underscore 2 o display style o can predict with certainty that the S plus O display style S plus O system is in some eigenstate of M display style M, but cannot say which eigenstate it is in unless O display style O itself interacts with the S plus O display style S plus O system. An apparent paradox arises when one considers the comparison, between two observers, of the specific outcome of a measurement. In the problem of the observer observed section above, let us imagine that the two experiments want to compare results. It is obvious that if the observer O has the full Hamiltonians of both S and O display style o he will be able to say with certainty that at time t 2 display style t underscore 2 o display style o has a determinate result for s display style s s spin but he will not be able to say what o display style o S result is without interaction, and hence breaking the unitary evolution of the compound system, because he doesn't know his own Hamiltonian. The distinction between knowing that and knowing what is a common one in everyday life. Everyone knows that the weather will be like something tomorrow, but no one knows exactly what the weather will be like. But, let us imagine that O measures the spin of S display style s and finds it to have spin down and note that nothing in the analysis above precludes this from happening what happens if he talks to o display style o and they compare the results of their experiments o display style o it will be remembered measured a spin up on the particle this would appear to be paradoxical the two observers surely will realize that they have disparate results However, this apparent paradox only arises as a result of the question being framed incorrectly, as long as we presuppose an absolute or true state of the world, this would, indeed, present an insurmountable obstacle for the relational interpretation. However, in a fully relational context, there is no way in which the problem can even be coherently expressed. The consistency inherent in the quantum formalism, exemplified by the M operator, Defined above, guarantees that there will be no contradictions between records. The interaction between O and whatever he chooses to measure, be it the S plus O 
display style s plus o compound system or o display style o and s display style s individually will be a physical interaction a quantum interaction and so a complete description of it can only be given by a further observer o display style o who will have a similar m operator guaranteeing coherency, and so on out. In other words, a situation such as that described above cannot violate any physical observation, as long as the physical content of quantum mechanics is taken to refer only to relations. Relational networks An interesting implication of RQM arises when we consider that interactions between material systems can only occur within the constraints prescribed by special relativity, namely within the intersections of the light cones of the systems, when they are spatiotemporally contiguous, in other words. Relativity tells us that objects have location only relative to other objects. By extension, a network of relations could be built up based on the properties of a set of systems, which determines which systems have properties relative to which others, and when since properties are no longer well-defined relative to a specific observer after unitary evolution breaks down for that observer, on the assumption that all interactions are local which is backed up by the analysis of the EPR paradox presented below, one could say that the ideas of state and spatiotemporal contiguity are two sides of the same coin. Spacetime location determines the possibility of interaction, but interactions determine spatiotemporal structure. The full extent of this relationship, however, has not yet fully been explored. Topic: <laughs> RQM and quantum cosmology. The universe is the sum total of everything in existence with any possibility of direct or indirect interaction with a local observer. A physical observer outside of the universe would require physically breaking of gauge invariance, and a concomitant alteration in the mathematical structure of gauge invariance theory. Similarly, RQM conceptually forbids the possibility of an external observer. Since the assignment of a quantum state requires at least two objects. System and observer, which must both be physical systems, there is no meaning in speaking of the state of the entire universe. This is because this state would have to be ascribed to a correlation between the universe and some other physical observer, but this observer in turn would have to form part of the universe. As was discussed above, it is not possible for an object to contain a complete specification of itself. Following the idea of relational networks above, an RQM-oriented cosmology would have to account for the universe as a set of partial systems providing descriptions of one another. The exact nature of such a construction remains an open question. Topic: <laughs> Relationship with other interpretations. The only group of interpretations of quantum mechanics with which RQM is almost completely incompatible is that of hidden variables theories. RQM shares some deep similarities with other views, but differs from them all to the extent to which the other interpretations do not accord with the relational world put forward by RQM. Topic: <laughs> Copenhagen interpretation. RQM is, in essence, quite similar to the Copenhagen interpretation, but with an important difference. In the Copenhagen interpretation, the macroscopic world is assumed to be intrinsically classical in nature, and wave function collapse occurs when a quantum system interacts with macroscopic apparatus. In RQM, any interaction, be it micro or macroscopic, causes the linearity of Schrödinger evolution to break down. RQM could recover a Copenhagen-like view of the world by assigning a privileged status not dissimilar to a preferred frame in relativity to the classical world. However, by doing this one would lose sight of the key features that RQM brings to our view of the quantum world. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Hidden variables theories. Bohm's interpretation of QM does not sit well with RQM. One of the explicit hypotheses in the construction of RQM is that quantum mechanics is a complete theory, that is it provides a full account of the world. Moreover, the Bohmian view seems to imply an underlying 
absolute set of states of all systems, which is also ruled out as a consequence of RQM. We find a similar incompatibility between RQM and suggestions such as that of Penrose, which postulate that some process in Penrose's case, gravitational effects violate the linear evolution of the Schrödinger equation for the system. Topic: <laughs> Relative state formulation. The many worlds family of interpretations MWI shares an important feature with RQM, that is, the relational nature of all value assignments that is, properties. Everett, however, maintains that the universal wavefunction gives a complete description of the entire universe, while Rivelli argues that this is problematic, both because this description is not tied to a specific observer and hence is meaningless in RQM, and because RQM maintains that there is no single, absolute description of the universe as a whole, but rather a net of interrelated partial descriptions. <laughs> Consistent histories approach In the consistent history's approach to QM, instead of assigning probabilities to single values for a given system, the emphasis is given to sequences of values, in such a way as to exclude as physically impossible all value assignments which result in inconsistent probabilities being attributed to observed states of the system. This is done by means of ascribing values to frameworks, and all values are hence framework dependent. RQM accords perfectly well with this view. However, the consistent history's approach does not give a full description of the physical meaning of framework-dependent value that is it does not account for how there can be facts if the value of any property depends on the framework chosen. By incorporating the relational view into this approach, the problem is solved. RQM provides the means by which the observer-independent, framework-dependent probabilities of various histories are reconciled with observer-dependent descriptions of the world. EPR and quantum non-locality RQM provides an unusual solution to the EPR paradox. Indeed, it manages to dissolve the problem altogether, inasmuch as there is no superluminal transportation of information involved in a Bell test experiment, the principle of locality is preserved inviolate for all observers. The problem In the EPR thought experiment, a radioactive source produces two electrons in a singlet state, meaning that the sum of the spin on the two electrons is zero. These electrons are fired off at time t 1 t 1 towards two spacelike separated observers, Alice and Bob, who can perform spin measurements, which they do at time t 2 display style t underscore 2 the fact that the two electrons are a singlet means that if alice measures z spin up on her electron bob will measure z spin down on his and vice versa the correlation is perfect if alice measures z axis spin and bob measures the orthogonal y axis spin however the correlation will be zero Intermediate angles give intermediate correlations in a way that, on careful analysis, proves inconsistent with the idea that each particle has a definite, independent probability of producing the observed measurements the correlations violate Bell's inequality. This subtle dependence of one measurement on the other holds even when measurements are made simultaneously and a great distance apart, which gives the appearance of a superluminal communication taking place between the two electrons. Put simply, how can Bob's electron know? what Alice measured on hers, so that it can adjust its own behavior accordingly. <inaudible> Relational solution In RQM, an interaction between a system and an observer is necessary for the system to have clearly defined properties relative to that observer. Since the two measurement events take place at spacelike separation, they do not lie in the intersection of Alice's and Bob's light cones. Indeed, there is no observer who can instantaneously measure both electrons' spin. The key to the RQM analysis is to remember that the results obtained on each wing of the experiment only become determinate for a given observer once that observer has interacted with the other observer involved. 
As far as Alice is concerned, the specific results obtained on Bob's wing of the experiment are indeterminate for her, although she will know that Bob has a definite result. In order to find out what result Bob has, she has to interact with him at some time t 3 t 3 in their future light cones, through ordinary classical information channels, the question then becomes one of whether the expected correlations in results will appear, will the two particles behave in accordance with the laws of quantum mechanics? Let us denote by m a alpha display style m underscore a alpha the idea that the observer a display style a alice measures the state of the system alpha display style alpha alice's particle so at time t 2 display style t underscore 2 alice knows the value of m a alpha display style m underscore a alpha the spin of her particle relative to herself but since the particles are in a singlet state she knows that m a alpha plus m a beta equals 0 display style m underscore a alpha plus m underscore a beta equals 0 and so if she measures her particle's spin to be sigma display style sigma she can predict that bob's particle beta display style beta will have spin minus sigma display style sigma all this follows from standard quantum mechanics and there is no spooky action at a distance yet from the coherence operator Discussed above, Alice also knows that if at t three display style t underscore three, she measures Bob's particle and then measures Bob, that is, asks him what result he got, or vice versa, the results will be consistent. M a b equals m a beta. Display style m underscore a b equals m underscore a beta. Finally, if a third observer, Charles, say, comes along and measures Alice, Bob, and their respective particles, he will find that everyone still agrees because his own coherence operator demands that m c a equals m c alpha. Display style m underscore c a equals m underscore c alpha and m c b equals m c beta. Display style m underscore c b equals m underscore c beta. While knowledge that the particles were in a singlet state tells him that m c alpha plus m c beta equals 0 display style m underscore c alpha plus m underscore c beta equals 0 thus the relational interpretation by shedding the notion of an absolute state of the system allows for an analysis of the epr paradox which neither violates traditional locality constraints nor implies superluminal information transfer since we can assume that all observers are moving at comfortable sublight velocities and most importantly the results of every observer are in full accordance with those expected by conventional quantum mechanics topic <laughs> derivation A promising feature of this interpretation is that RQM offers the possibility of being derived from a small number of axioms, or postulates based on experimental observations. Rivelli's derivation of RQM uses three fundamental postulates. However, it has been suggested that it may be possible to reformulate the third postulate into a weaker statement, or possibly even do away with it altogether. The derivation of RQM parallels, to a large extent, quantum logic. 
The first two postulates are motivated entirely by experimental results, while the third postulate, although it accords perfectly with what we have discovered experimentally, is introduced as a means of recovering the full Hilbert space formalism of quantum mechanics from the other two postulates. The two empirical postulates are Postulate 1, there is a maximum amount of relevant information that may be obtained from a quantum system. Postulate 2, it is always possible to obtain new information from a system, we let W S display style W left S right denote the set of all possible questions that may be asked of a quantum system, which we shall denote by Q I display style Q underscore I I element of W display style I in W. We may experimentally find certain relations between these questions. Display style left land lower neg subset bot right corresponding to intersection orthogonal sum orthogonal complement inclusion and orthogonality respectively where q one q two q one q two Display style q underscore one bot q underscore two equiv q underscore one subset neg q underscore two. Topic structure. From the first postulate, it follows that we may choose a subset q c i display style q underscore c caret i n display style n mutually independent questions where n display style n is the number of bits contained in the maximum amount of information we call such a question q c i display style q underscore c caret i a complete question the value of q c I display style q underscore c caret i can be expressed as an n-tuple sequence of binary valued numerals, which has two n equals k display style two caret n equals k possible permutations of zero and one values. There will also be more than one possible complete question. If we further assume that the relations display style left land lower right are defined for all q i display style q underscore i then w s display style w left s right is an orthomodular lattice, while all the possible unions of sets of complete questions form a Boolean algebra with the q c i display style q underscore c caret i as atoms the second postulate governs the event of further questions being asked by an observer o 1 display style o underscore 1 of a system s display style s when o 1 display style o underscore 1 already has a full complement of information on the system an answer to a complete question we denote by p q q c j display style p left q q underscore c caret j right the probability that a yes answer to a question q display style q will follow the complete question Q C J display style Q underscore C caret J if Q display style Q is independent of Q C J display style Q underscore C caret J then P equals zero point five Display style p equals 0.5, or it might be fully determined by q c 
j display style q underscore c caret j in which case p equals 1 display style p equals 1 there is also a range of intermediate possibilities, and this case is examined below. If the question that O 1 display style O underscore 1 wants to ask the system is another complete question Q B I display style Q underscore B caret I the probability P I J equals P Q B I Q C J Display style P carrot I J equals P left Q underscore B carrot I Q underscore C carrot J right of a yes answer has certain constraints upon it one zero P I J one display style zero L E Q P carrot I J L E Q one two I P I J equals one display style sum underscore I P carrot I J equals one three J P I J equals 1 display style sum underscore j p caret i j equals 1 the three constraints above are inspired by the most basic of properties of probabilities and are satisfied if p i j equals u i j 2 Display style p caret i j equals left u caret i j right caret two, where u i j display style u caret i j is a unitary matrix. Postulate three: if b display style b and c display style c are two complete questions then the unitary matrix u b c display style u underscore b c associated with their probability described above satisfies the equality u c d equals u c b u b d Display style u underscore c d equals u underscore c b u underscore b d for all b c display style b c and d display style d. This third postulate implies that if we set a complete question q c i Display style q underscore c caret i wrangle as a basis vector in a complex Hilbert space. We may then represent any other question q b j display style q underscore b caret j wrangle as a linear combination q b j equals i u b C I J Q C I display style Q underscore B carrot J wrangle equals sum underscore I U underscore B C carrot I J Q underscore C carrot I wrangle and the conventional probability rule of quantum mechanics states that if two sets of basis vectors are in the relation above, then the probability P I J display style P caret I J is P I J equals Q C I Q B J two 
equals u b c i j 2 display style p caret i j equals langle q underscore c caret i q underscore b caret j wrangle caret 2 equals u underscore b c caret i j caret 2 topic dynamics The Heisenberg picture of time evolution accords most easily with RQM. Questions may be labeled by a time parameter t q t display style t right arrow q t and are regarded as distinct if they are specified by the same operator but are performed at different times. Because time evolution is a symmetry in the theory, it forms a necessary part of the full formal derivation of the theory from the postulates, the set of all possible questions at time t 2 is isomorphic to the set of all possible questions at time t 1 it follows, by standard arguments in quantum logic, from the derivation above that the orthomodular lattice W S display style W S has the structure of the set of linear subspaces of a Hilbert space, with the relations between the questions corresponding to the relations between linear subspaces. It follows that there must be a unitary transformation U T 2 Minus t one display style u left t underscore two t underscore one right that satisfies q t two equals u t two minus t one q t one u Minus one T two minus T one Display style Q T underscore two equals U left T underscore two T underscore one right Q T underscore one U carrot minus one left T underscore two T underscore one right and U T two minus T one equals exp minus i t two minus t one h display style u left t underscore two t underscore one right equals exp i left t underscore two t underscore one right h where h Display style h is the Hamiltonian, a self-adjoint operator on the Hilbert space, and the unitary matrices are an abelian group. Topic. See also. Coherence, physics, measurement in quantum mechanics, measurement problem, philosophy of information, philosophy of physics. Quantum decoherence Quantum entanglement Quantum information Quantum Zeno effect Schrodinger's cat Notes <laughs>